Okay, so today we're going to go over the top 10 ways to extend the life of your battery bank. I'll put up a summary and you can pause and look these over, but let's get right into it. Number 10, keep them clean. So this one's pretty easy to do, pretty self-explanatory, so let's get right to number 9. Max charge and discharge rates. Okay, so for reference, I'm using the Trojan L16 RE-Bs. Okay, so we look at the spec sheet, we see that it's 370 amp hours at 20 hour discharge. And if we take uh, and discharge it faster, then we get less energy out of it. And if we go slower, we can get more. So if you're discharging, if you got your loads, you want to stretch them out. You don't want to put them all on at the same time. Uh, because if you stretch them out, you can get a lot more energy out of your batteries. So with regard to the max charge rate, the colder they are, the more current you can put into them, and the lower the charge. So if they're, you know, 60% state of charge, you can put more current into them. Once they hit about 85%, uh, then you need to back off on the amount of current. I think for my batteries, the L16, I have a C10 max charge rate, which just means uh, you can put up to 10% of the maximum capacity of your bank. So I have a 740 amp hour battery bank. So once they hit 85% state of charge, I really shouldn't put more than 74 amps into them. Uh, but sometimes, uh, I, actually often, it'll be cloudy in the morning. It's cool out and the sun pops out all of a sudden and then I get a massive amount of current coming out. It's not uncommon for me to put 80, 90 amps, even I think up to about 110 or 120 amps on occasion. So it's something that uh, I do need to keep an eye on, uh, something to be aware of. Um, but you should, you should go by the specs of your own battery system and, and uh, do what's right for you. Okay, number eight, matching batteries and have them the same age. So again, this one's pretty simple. Um, if you're just kind of going out and collecting batteries of different brand names and different ages and different uh, condition, uh, they're not going to they're not going to behave as well because some are going to have more capacity than others and higher voltages, and it's just not going to be as good as if you go out and just buy all of your batteries at the same time identical matching batteries. Okay, number seven, auto fill the water. So, uh, you know, it's a pain in the neck to fill these batteries every month. If you got to pull all those caps off and all that, and then, you know, make sure you're getting them to the right height, it can be a little bit of a pain. So I'd recommend getting the auto fill kit and it makes it super easy. I mean, you can fill, I fill all 16 batteries in about five minutes. Plus with the leveling, I'm pretty assured that they should be at the exact right, correct level. And it's just uh, one less thing to go wrong. Okay, number six, equalization. So this one's a little tricky. It's, um, you know, there's no exact science as to how often and for how long you should equalize. I think uh, Trojan, for my batteries, their L16s, they recommend two hours once a month. Um, but I tend to back off of that a bit because my batteries are always between, usually between 80 and 100% charge and they're brought to 100% every day. Uh, so I think two hours every month might be a little bit too much. Um, I could be wrong about that. This is something that I think could be automated in the future. But for now, I just kind of got a guess and I'm doing one hour every month. Okay, so we're starting to get serious. Number five, battery temperature. Now this one is something that really got my attention here recently. As I was looking through here and I noticed this uh, statement here on the spec sheet, chemical reactions internal to the battery are driven by voltage and temperature. The higher the battery temperature, the faster chemical reactions will occur. Okay. While higher temperatures can provide improved discharge performance, the increased rate of chemical reactions will result in a corresponding loss of battery life. This is the important part. 
As a rule of thumb, for every 10 C increase in temperature, the reaction rate doubles, thus a month of operation at 35 C is equivalent in battery life to two months at 25 C. So I'm reading that as if your batteries are 10 C hotter, they're going to last half as long. And I'm kind of taking this relative to 80 degrees Fahrenheit as kind of the starting point. So my batteries are typically closer to 90. So this has got me a bit concerned. So it kind of makes sense if you look at the capacity versus temperature, the reaction rates have increased at the higher temps. So that state of charge is maybe misleading now. Is when you think you're at 80 percent, because you're at the higher temperature with more reaction rate, you're probably really not. So it's almost like the equivalent of draining your batteries twice as much. At least that's the way I'm reading it, but I could definitely be wrong and I'd appreciate any comments from people who know better. Uh, but uh, I went ahead and kind of drew this in and take this with a grain of salt, but this is your depth of discharge versus life cycle. And if you take a 10 degree higher, um, then you could follow this red graph. You know, it's going to be half the life cycle. So anyway, we'll have to uh, see how that affects me. I might work on trying to figure out how to keep my battery bank cooler. Number four, southeast and southwest facing okay. panel. So what does this have to do with batteries, right? Well, this is kind of a cheat. So uh, we'll break this into two things. If you have a grid tie system with no batteries and you want to generate the most power, you put all your panels on the south facing roof and that's how you're going to get the most power. Okay, but if you got a battery bank, then that might not be the best answer. So instead of putting them all on the south facing roof, you want to peel off some southeast and some of them to go southwest. And you're not going to generate as much power this way, but it'll be close. And the more important thing is you're stretching the solar day. So you're going to get power earlier, start charging those batteries, and you're going to have power later to continue charging the batteries, which makes your battery life a lot longer. Okay, number three, I think this is really important, and I do this almost every day, is I get my batteries to charge up to 100%. Now, of course, if it's going to be cloudy for a bunch of days in a row, then you probably can't do this. But it just happens, and you can actually go look at my, um, I'll leave a link to my system parameters, and you can look at my entire history on there. Um, and you'll see that they do get, they're typically between 75 and 100% state of charge and I bring them to 100% almost every day. Okay, we're down to number two, charging parameters. So it's number two for a reason. This is really important, you wanna get this right. So you gotta look it up and you know, for your battery bank and your voltage, you, you'll have a recommended settings from the manufacturer and uh, you definitely wanna follow those. So let's take a quick look at mine. So for my flooded lead acid system at 48 volts, my absorb voltage is set to 58.4, float voltage is set to 53.6, and equalization is 62. The other important thing to consider is how long to keep the system in absorb. I've got my system set up based on state of charge, and it will stay in absorb until it reaches 100%. Okay, and the number one thing you got to do to make your batteries last longer is pay close attention to the depth of discharge. Um, my system came with a little chart that shows depth of discharge versus cycle life. And if we take a look here, if we're at, uh, if we keep them above 80% state of charge, then we can expect to get 13 years of life out of them. That, that is assuming you do everything else right. But if we drop just down to 70% state of charge, we lose four years, so it's exponential drop. That's a big difference. Um, now you also hear a lot of people talking about, well, we can take these lead acid down to 50%. Well, yeah, you can, but look what happens if you do that. You're all the way down to five years life, and that's best case scenario. So you really want to stay up here in the, you know, 80 to 100% if you want your batteries to last 13 years. 
one more thing I look at here is and take this with a big grain of salt again is this temperature thing which I'm just just sort of beginning to understand or I just recently came across if that's true that 10 degrees Celsius temperature increase and remember the reaction rates increase so that that cuts your life in half then now even if we stay above 80 percent charge you're only in you know the seven six seven year range and if you're dropping to 50 percent at a high temperature your battery's only going to last a couple of years so that's just my opinion guys you got to look it up yourself and make your own decisions of course um, and I know you will and lastly if you have your own solar power battery bank if you would go ahead and fill out this form and post it in the comments in this format I'll, I'll go ahead and post one and pen it at the top uh, then we can kind of compare notes see what's working what's not working and maybe we can save some money. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.